Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Shri Bhishma Vacha Uti Mahi Rupakal Vita Vitrishna Bhagavati Sarvata Pungave Vibhumdi Svasukham Upagate Kvachit Vihartum Prakrutim Upe Yushiyad Bhava Pravaha Tribhuvana Kamanam Tamala Varanam Ravikara Gauravaram Varam Dadane Vapurala Kuhula Vritana Nabjam Vijaya Sakhera Tiras Tumena Vatya Yudhitura Garajo Vidhum Raveshva Kachaluli Tashrama Varya Lankritasme Mamanishita Sharair Vividhyamana Vachi Vilasat Kavaches to Krishna Atma Sapadisaki Vacho Nisham Yamadhe Nija Parayo Baleo Ratham Niveshya Sitavati Para Sai Nikayu Rakshna Sitavati Partha Sakirati Mamastu Vyava Hita Pritna Mukham Nirikshya Svajana Vadhar Vimukhasya Dosha Buddha Kumati Arat Atma Vidyayayash Charana Rati Parmas Yatas Yamestu Swaniga Mamma Pahar Yamat Pratiknam Rita Madikaratumava Plutora Tastaha Dhrita Ratha Charano Vyaya Chalat Gur Hari Riva Hantum Ibam Rato Toriya Shita Vishika Hato Vishirinadam Shaha Shata Japari Pluta Atta Inome Prasambhama Bhesa Saramad Vadhartam Sabhava to me Bhagavan Gatir Mukundaham Vijaya Ratha Kutumba Ata Totre Dritta Hayarash Minita Srinakshani Bhagavati Rati Ras to me Mumorsho Yamiha Mirikshya Hatagata Swarupam Lalita Gati Vila Sabal Guhasa Pranayani Rikshana Kalpito Rumana Kritamanu Kritavatya Unmadandaha Prakruti Magan Kilayas Yagopavadhaha Munigana Nipavarya Sankuleyantaha Sadasi Yudhishthira Raja Suya Esham Arhanam Upapeta Ikshaniyo Mamadrishi Gochara Esha Aviratma Tamimamaham Ajam Sharira Bhajaham Hidhiridhishthita Matma Kalpitanam Prati drisham eva neka darkham ekam Samadhigatos me vidruta bheda moham Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare 
सुतर्वाचा कृष्ण एवे भगवती मनोवा कृष्टि वृत्ति आत्मनमेश Sudha Goswami said, Thus Bhishma Dev measured himself in the Super Soul. Lord Shri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, with his mind, speech, sight, and actions, and thus he became silent and his breathing stopped. Uh, Hare Krishna, Prabhu Zen, Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances. So we'll try to continue from uh, last time where we left off. <coughs> um, let's just do Manglashna. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gnananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasme Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Namam Vishnupadaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Nitinamine Bhutale Mahadbhir Yaima Puro Vipu Nirma Yashete Yadamu Shukurusham Bhunte Gunan Shodasha Shodashat Matam Solan Krishishta Bhagavan Vacham Sime Shri Krishna Sharanam Sharanagatam Katha Amritam Satatati Vatam Bhakti Vedanta Marga Pantanam Sarvaloka Rishi Deva Janna Prasannam Sarvaloka Rishi Deva Janna Prasannam Hare Krishna um, So again, um, my gratitude to His Grace Valram Prabhu for arranging this session and all the Minneapolis devotees. I hope you all are safe and well. Um, I heard in the news that uh, there were some riots going on and um, there are curfews imposed. So hopefully all devotees are nice and well, and we can use this opportunity of curfew actually to do more chanting and more reading of Shivan Bhagavatam. So last time we were discussing, you know, the prayers of Vishwadev, and we were able to cover uh, up to shloka number three. Um, so now we just uh, reflect back on the main points of those verses. So in the first verse we see. Vishwadev invest his thinking, feeling, and willing onto Sri Krishna as he is about to leave the body. And we looked that there Vishwadev makes a proposition, you know, as per Vishwanath Chakri, but it tackles commentary. Uh, the word used is Upakalpita, which means a marriage proposal of the mind. So mind is regarded as a daughter. And uh, you know how we look after our daughters very carefully. So we should look after our minds like that taking special care that it is not polluted. And then that clean, purified mind, we can offer it to Krishna. And in the marriage proposal, you know, the first thing the girl looks for is the beauty of Krishna. And the Bhishma there then goes on to um, glorify the beauty of Krishna. He says, Tribhuvan Kamanam Tamala Varnam. In all of the three worlds, everyone desires Krishna because of his beauty. Then in the next verse, he glorifies about the vela and courage of Krishna. Because without courage, beauty in a man has no value. And there we see how Bhishma there shot his sharp arrows and pierced the kavacha, uh, the armor and the shield of Krishna and pierced his skin and blood was coming out. And Bhishma there appreciates that Krishna took those arrows. Mm? Uh, although Bhishma there acted with aggression but for krishna you know in the commentary Prabhupada says those arrows were like flowers so krishna's courage is uh, unparalleled but what's the use of uh, you know courage if um, you know the person uh, who acts in in a, in a malefic way if he is not submissive so this next verse Verse number 35 
in 36 of this chapter, which we'll try to cover today, will concentrate on a few qualities of Krishna that is appealing to Krishna there. So we'll just quickly read. This verse uh, 35 is very nice because in this verse, um, Bhishma Dev remembers how Krishna is obedient to the command of his dear friend Arjuna. So Bhishma Dev says, Sapadi Sakhi Vacho Nisham Yamadhyem Nijaparayo Balayo Ratham Niveshyam Stitavati Para Sainika Yurakshna Hitavati Partha Sakhi Ratir Mamastu so uh, Bhishmadev says, being obedient to the command of his friend, Lord Shri Krishna entered the arena of the battlefield of Kurukshetra between the soldiers of Arjuna and Duryodhana. And while there, he shortened the lifespan of the opposite party by his merciful glance. This was done simply by his looking at the enemy. Let my mind be fixed upon that Krishna. So, uh, uh, you know, in um, um, it is mentioned that when a man is very courageous, you know, very uh, chivalry, and he shows his masculinity, then there is a danger that he is only affected by the malefic influence of the Mars planet. You know, there is this famous materialistic book which is written, um, Men are from Mars and women are from Venus. Basically, um, what that book implies that a man and woman are, are living entities um, of different physiological uh, makeup. Uh, there's difference in the way women think, there's difference in the way men think. In fact, men cannot understand how women think. And women also cannot understand how men think. So when a person in um, uh, astrology, it is said, is inflicted by the seventh planet, which is the Mars, uh, it is called malefic. It is that the, the nature of a person's masculinity predominates. And he is insensitive to especially the needs of the fair gender, the emotions of the fair gender when you know the fair gender is um, uh, in not a right mood or wants to express herself the understanding uh, is not there uh, from the uh, from 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 the male or the husband um, but Bhishma Dev here says that actually Krishna is not like that Krishna is submissive to the command uh, of his pure devotee Arjuna and he says this by expressing Sapadi on the battlefield, Sakhi Vacho. So Arjuna said, Senior Ubhayor Madhya Ratham Sthapya Me Achyuta. O infallible Lord, Achyuta. Senior Ubhayor Madhya. Take my chariot to Madhya in the middle of the battlefield between the armies of myself and Duryodhana. And situate the rat, ratham sthapya me achita. Yavad eta niraksham me. So that I can see, I can do niraksham, I can uh, assess, you know, who has come here, yodho kaman avasthita, to fight this battle. So Krishna actually took orders from Arjuna. And not only that, uh, Krishna is so kind that he looked after, later on we'll see, that he looked after Arjuna's chariot as his own family. In Mahabharata it is mentioned that when Krishna agreed to be the chariot of Arjuna, then he looked after the chariot, the horses of the chariot. Every morning uh, before the battle, when Arjuna came to the chariot, Krishna would be there before Arjuna. And Krishna would wait for Arjuna like a driver would wait for a master. And uh, Krishna would put his hand out. So Arjuna then would put his hand on Krishna's hand and then Krishna would slightly lift Arjuna up and make him go up the chariot. 
And thereafter, then Krishna would climb on the chariot and hold the reins of the chariot and go into the battle. And after the battle in the evening, again, when Krishna drew the chariot um, near the tent of Arjuna, then Krishna first would go get down from the chariot. He would extend his hand. Arjuna would put his hand on Krishna's hand and then he would climb down from the chariot. And thereafter, when Arjuna left, Krishna would look after the chariot, look after the horses, feed the horses, and thereafter only when Krishna would go. So Prabhupada very nicely in the, you know, paper uh, of um, Bhagavad Gita 121-22, where Arjuna orders, Senor uh, Ubayo uh, Madhya, take my chariot to the middle of the battlefield. Very nicely Prabhupada says in the paper, and we'll just read a bit of the, that paper. He says, Although Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, out of his causeless mercy, he was engaged in the service of his friend. He never fails in his affection for his devotees, and thus he is addressed herein as infallible. Hmm? Krishna's name is Achyuta. Chuta means one who fails, and Achyuta means one who never fails. So Krishna never fails in showing affection to his devotees. As a charioteer, he had to carry out the orders of Arjuna. And since he did not hesitate to do so, he is addressed here as infallible. Although he had accepted the position of a charioteer for his devotee, his supremacy, his supreme position was not challenged. In all circumstances, he is the supreme personality of Godhead, the Rishi Kesha, the Lord of the total senses. The relationship between the Lord and his Savita is very sweet and transcendental. The Savita is always ready to render a service to the Lord. And similarly, the Lord is always seeking an opportunity to render some service to the devotee. He takes great pleasure in his pure devotees, assuming the advantageous position of ordering him than he does of being the giver of orders. As a master, everyone is under his orders and no one is above him to order him. But when he finds that a pure devotee is ordering him, he obtains transcendental pleasure, although he is the infallible master of all circumstances. Uh, so the main point of this paper, as you see, that Krishna only through pure devotees relishing, relishes saving the pure devotee. And in this uh, way, he uh, takes an inferior position of doing service to his pure devotee. And he takes a subordinate role. We see in the Ratsu Yagna of Yudhishthir Maharaj, when Krishna came from Dwarka, then Yudhishthir Maharaj appointed Krishna as a logistics manager, meaning that Krishna would arrange all the logistics of all, all the various guests who would be coming on arranging their prashadam, their accommodation, and then uh, arranging the sacrificial arena, who would uh, you know, be sitting where, who would welcome the guests, all the logistics you know, that, that we have to arrange in a festival uh, or a submelon. Arj uh, uh, Krishna was giving in charge and Krishna arranged everything. And then Krishna approached Yudhishthir Maharaj and he said, uh, I have arranged everything, all the logistics are done, everything is looked after. Now tell me, O King, what do you want me to do? And Yudhishthir Maharaj said, you don't worry about anything, you just be with us. So um, Krishna said, no, no, you have to tell me some service some menial service I, I, I want to do. So Yudhishthira Maharaj thought long and hard, and he thought that actually all the services already have been allocated. So jokingly, Yudhishthira Maharaj said that, okay, whatever service uh, that is not allocated, you do it. Yudhishthira Maharaj was sure that all services has been allocated. So Krishna said, okay, one service remained. That service was when all the guests and all the 
uh, big personalities, uh, VIPs, so-called, when they finish their meals, the service of uh, taking up their plates mm, and disposing of those plates uh, was not allocated. And Krishna, along with his 16,108 wives, volunteered for that service. So when the guests finished the meals, Krishna brought all his 16,108 wives and they all in the line started picking the plates. And when the Pandavas and Yudhishthira Maharaj especially saw this, they became shocked. And he said, how oh, Krishna, how can you do this? You know, they went and grabbed onto Krishna's hand and, and forbade him from doing this service, which is not regarded as a very clean service, you know, picking someone else's juta or, or you know, after uh, uh, picking someone's remnants of, of, of food, prasadam. So Krishna said, Maharaj, you told me whatever service is remaining, you can do that. So this service hasn't been allocated. So it is, you know, by your order, now I'm doing this. So Yudhishthira Maharaj said, no, 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 no. But Krishna said, no, no, please allow me to serve. So Krishna is always running after saving the devotees. So how much we should be running after saving the devotees as well? When we are pure in our intention, then Krishna actually wants to save the devotees. Hmm? Piyuvah in intention means here apeksha. We don't have any apeksha or apeksha means um, we, we don't expect anything from anyone. Nir apeksha munim shantam nir vairaha samadarshina. We are without any envy and we uh, are samadarshina. We look equally towards everyone. Krishna says, I actually desire to follow the footsteps of those devotees um, and I desire to take the dust of the uh, lotus feet of such devotees and purify the whole world. Uh, he says, and we see that Krishna through his pure devotees actually purifies sinful persons um, and purifies this whole world. So Bhishma Dev specifically here is mentioning that although Krishna is taking a submissive position, uh, although he is superior, but he at all does not hesitate, you know, to follow the command or order. You know, there is a lecture of Srila Prabhupada in Los Angeles, May 17, 1973, where Srila Prabhupada is talking about, uh, you know, Krishna. And, and, and the pastimes with Jamurti. So he says, Krishna is, you know, subservient to the order of his wife. Usually, you know, being a hand-packed husband is not a very nice thing. It is embarrassing. Uh, but Krishna, very proudly, he actually declares that, no, I'm under control of Jam Jamurti. Uh, so he goes to the heavens. And there in the heavenly planets, Jamurti sees the um, uh, Parijat flowers. And she asks Krishna, please get those flowers for me. Krishna said, what to sweep of the flower? I'll get the whole tree. And in that way, every day in Dwarka, you can pluck the flower. Yeah? And so Krishna went to unplug the tree. And in the meantime, Indra came. Indra said, what are you doing? You know, this is the plant of the heavenly planet. You can't take this. Krishna, Prabhupada, I'll, I'll say exactly what Prabhupada says. Huh? Krishna says, I, sh I shall, um, sorry, I'll just, I'll just read what Prabhupada exactly says in the lecture. So he says, um, so when he was doing so, Indra came. Also when Krishna was taking the plant, Indra came. Indra is the king of heavenly planet. No, sir, you cannot do that. And Prabhupada laughs. You cannot take this tree to the lower planet. No, I cannot allow that. And so Krishna said, no, my wife wants it. I must. That is Krishna. Prabhupada laughs again. How he is complete. Just like a hand-packed husband. Hand-packed husband means, you know, whatever the wife says, husband follows. To the demise of his reputation, to satisfy 
the wife in every respect he plays the part uh, um, so he is the supreme person huh? but when he plays the part of a husband he plays is perfectly you know every wife actually wants that whatever they say you know the husband should do you know? so krishna is the favorite husband uh, and vishma dev says that sapadi sakhi vacho nishamya madhye nijabalayo ratham niveshaniya and in this way we see that krishna is not only courageous he is not affected by the malefic nature of mars planets he is soft as well mm? so he is soft to the needs to the emotions to the sensitivity of the fair gender so everyone wants krishna as a husband uh, actually rukmini devi in her uh, prayers or in a letter to the krishna to krishna that she writes there she says it kale narsimha naraloka naro bhiva ramam that who there in this world is who would desire any other husband apart from you when she has come of age of marriage so krishna is the best of all uh, in terms of his youth his valor his beauty his character um, and no one can match him nacha samasya vidas cha drishyate no one is equal to him and no one is greater to him um, so um, uh, in the uh, next uh, uh, line the third line then bhishma dev goes on to say that while arjuna was in the middle of the battlefield and he was doing nirikshan he was examining the army and we know what was going on in his mind his mind was getting polluted as his mind was getting polluted what was krishna doing krishna was also doing a nirikshan examining the army in the opposite side but while krishna was doing that sthitavati para sainika your akshna akshna means eyes or sight so krishna's sight was on para sainika para sainika means the other side of the army duryodhana's army and what he did ayur ayur means the duration of life hritavati krishna decimated or depleted or diminished the life span of the people in the other side simply by looking at them prabhupad translates by his merciful glance now how can we say by merciful glance you know the duration of life is reduced uh, usually you know merciful glance means that one should increase the duration of life actually that is not important how long we live in this material body what is important that after we leave this material body then what happens uh, in our next destination uh, so even the soldiers who had come to fight this battle on opposite side krishna was merciful to them because by giving them his darshan krishna was actually purifying them uh, uh, and in this way uh, those who saw krishna uh, they uh, became delivered uh, bhishma dev very nicely says that yam iha nirikshya hata gata swarupam mm-hmm. in next few verses this verse comes um, so he says that yam iha nirikshya so this word nirikshya again comes that krishna was doing nirikshan as well he was examining the other army as well but when he did that nirikshan hata gata swarupam he diminished the life span of the soldiers of the opposite army uh, and so he is uh, doing this act is merciful not that he is taking side actually whoever was on the pandavas side and whoever was on the kauravas side the treatment may have been different krishna uh, you know uh, in terms of looking he diminished their life span the treatment was different and on the pandava side uh he actually extended their life span so the treatment is different but the end result was the same what was the end result 
tamhya nirikshya hata gata swarupam after having diminished their life span krishna took them back home back to godhead they attained their original swarupa as a servant of krishna and in this way uh, we can understand that his glance even is merciful and actually those who saw krishna in this way they appreciated so we should also actually give ourselves an opportunity to see the form of krishna krishna out of his own mercy comes in form of archa vigraha so daily you know if we just attend to the deities and um, see the deities have darshan of deities then um, it is a very uh, auspicious thing darshan of krishna it is a part of devotional service our guru maharaj used to emphasize on this verse uh, yad kirtanam yad smaranam yad ekshanam yad vandanam yad shravanam yad arhanam lokasya sadyo vidunoti karmasham tasmay subhadra shravase namo namaha this verse is spoken by uh shukdev goswami you know in second canto fourth chapter of shrimad bhagavatam i think it is verse number 17 and there in this word ikshanam comes ikshanam means having audience of the lord seeing the lord and maharaj mentioned that in dwarka dhish temple actually everyone goes just to see the lord uh, there is actually no so called formalized kirtan arranged no it's a mad rush just to see the form of the lord so he mentioned just by seeing lord you know our impurities become purified and also at that time we are attending krishna but our attendance should be attentive you know sometimes when we have darshan of uh, the deities then when we come out of the temple or even from our own house when we come out then we try to think okay how did krishna look to that then we think that actually we do not concentrate when we are having darshan of krishna we forget what kind or what color of uh, dress dhoti krishna was wearing we forget what kind of turban or or you know uh, mukut he had we forget what kind of flowers what color of flowers they were we forget whether he had a buffalo horn uh, you know tied on his waist uh, and so what were we doing while we were you know having audience of krishna obviously we were not having audience of krishna you know our attention span our mind was just wandering here and there um, so we should not just attend you know just like in the school we attend to mark the payroll uh, sorry not the attendance roll um, we should attend with attention and that's when we give the opportunity to have darshan of krishna and also we are giving krishna to have an opportunity to glance mercifully at us at, at us when krishna glances mercifully at us then his merciful glance actually removes all impurities hmm? um you know in in uh, vrindavan uh, you know surdas the famous blind devotee of the lord was there and although he was blind you know the astonishing thing was that where he was staying in vrindavan in that temple the pujari every morning would open the curtain and then he would request surdas to please describe what ornaments and garment the lord is wearing and surdas in very nice prajabhasa language he would sing the glories of the lord and in singing the glories he would describe what kind of dhoti what color of dhoti lord is wearing what kind of jewelry he is wearing what does his mukut or his pagadi look like and in this way uh, everyone used to relish the composition of surdas but pujari was thinking how can he so accurately describe how the lord looks he is blind so pujari what day one day what pujari did he actually did not dress the lord and he did not tell anyone what he is doing he and and when when he opened the curtain and he asked surdas you please describe how the lord looks to them so surdas smiled 
एंड ही सेड आज भय मोरे हरि नंगम नंगा दैट टुडे माय लॉर्ड हरि इज नॉट वेयरिंग एनीथिंग ही इज फुली नेकेड एंड देन द पुजारी अंडरस्टूड नो दिस इज नॉट द विजन नो इन um a prabhupad quotes this way as many many times atah shri krishna namadi natad krayam indriya with this plant material senses we cannot actually see krishna or experience krishna sevon mukhe hi jivado starting with the service of tongue um and it is service huh? and through that service swayam eva spurati adha krishna becomes himself manifest hmm? so the attitude and the intention is more important than the mere action itself uh, just by attending attending is a good thing we should all attend but in our attendance attention should be there as well and in this way krishna also glances at us and krishna purifies us krishna's um, uh, you know uh, glance purifies us uh, gopis very nicely they they in the gopi geet they they sing this verse din parikshaye neela kuntale vanaruhananam bipradaritam ghanarajasvalam darshayan ंगीलकुंत when krishna after he is grazing the cows and the calves along with his cow head friends when he comes then what is his vesha his roop look like vanaruhananam bidbrat avritam then he is giving darshan again and again muhur and what is his darshan like at that time ghana rajasvalam ghana means a thick layer of raja raja means the dust so the dust of rindavan thick layer of dust of rindavan actually krishna is covered in that so when he goes to uh, you know graze the cows and the calves at that time krishna is shamavarana uh, he is a bluish black uh, but when he comes then he is covered in the dust of rindavan at that time he is panduranga uh, um he is brownish uh, his hair is brownish you know he becomes brownish uh, and even that form that color of krishna is so beautiful darshayam mohor krishna again and again gives darshan at that time so when krishna goes in the morning that time all the brajvasis have darshan of krishna but then throughout the day they cannot see krishna so they become very remorseful Uh, but during that time they in groups of one or two they get together and they discuss about krishna krishna's past time you know he did this he did that and they become immersed in krishna's activities and at the same time they quickly do their work and as soon as krishna is about to come everyone just opens their doors and windows of the house they come out and they see the this great festival of krishna coming back to vrindavan along with you know thousands of cows and calves along with this cow head boy friends and it is festival for the eyes this sight that krishna is coming varha pidam natavar vapu karaniyo karanikaram गायतीर्तिष्ण नाइस डिस्क्रिप्शन इज दिन ऑफ कृष्ण फॉर्म 
Uh, and he is coming here and he is playing flute, uh, blowing nectar from his lips into the flute. Uh, and Vrindaharanyam Swapadharamanam, barefoot, without any shoes, he's walking and dancing along the forest grooves of Vrindavan. Gayanti Gita Kirtihi. And his cowhead boys, friends, they are singing his glories. Uh, and in this way, the whole Vrindavan Pratibhasis see this festival. And there happened to be actually one gopi who came from another village who was newly married. And her mother-in-law and sister-in-law actually would not let her out. They would say, oh, you know, we have to hide her from Krishna. Because once anyone sees the face of Krishna, then they cannot operate or function normally. You know, they'll be lost. Uh, they'll put uh, salt in the sugar. You know, they'll put sugar, you know, in, uh, and mix it with spices, do all kinds of things because they're fully immersed in thinking of Krishna. So they were thinking, you know, so they were actually going out when Krishna came. They would see Krishna themselves, but they would lock the doors and windows of the house and not allow the daughter-in-law to see but the daughter in law would hear throughout the day about this person, Krishna. And just by hearing, she became attracted to the form of Krishna. And so she intensely desired that my mother in law and sister in law are, are locking me inside the house. But I want to see this so called beautiful boy. I hear about him, but I want to see him with my own eyes. So she intensely desired. And Krishna is Paramatma in everyone's heart. So he understood the desire of this gopi. So while Krishna was coming, when he reached near the house of this gopi, Krishna pulled the tail of a calf. And that calf actually jumped and ran into the house of this gopi. It, it just forced itself through the door. The door opened. And Krishna, on the premise of getting the calf, he went inside the house. And there that gopi was and Krishna looked at her face to face. There was eye contact. And then Krishna, after looking at her for a while, he just took the calf and smilingly he ran off. And that gopi remained in same posture, absorbed herself in, after seeing the beauty of Krishna, you know, through the apparatus of eyes, Krishna's lotus face, she just, uh, no absorbed in her heart and when the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law came and when they saw her just like a statue in that position they understood she has seen the black serpent and now she is gone so this is the merciful glance darshan of krishna that we all should be anxious to see because when you see the Lord, all great benefit happens to us. Um, and um, um, Krishna's lotus eyes, you know, it is described as lotus eyes. Uh, very nicely, uh, um, Jayadev Goswami in Gita Govinda, he actually sings uh, Amala Kamala. Dala lochana hai, bhava mochana hai. So Krishna's eyes, lochan, how are they? Amala, they are without any death. Our eyes are full of death. Why? Because it, when it sees things, it desires for things. It lusts after things. But Krishna's eyes are transcendental. Amala. And they are kamala means like lotus petals dala lochana hai bhava mochan hai and one who sees krishna's eyes or oh, krishna's eyes when he sees you know others living entities like here we see krishna's eyes krishna is doing nirikshana then bhava mochan bhava mochan means bhava means the cycle of birth and death mochan means he liberates so when krishna sees us then he liberates us from the cycle of birth and death. Very nicely. Amala, Kamala, Dala, Lochana, 
भवमोचन त्रिभुवन भुवन निधान जय जय देव हरे त्रिभुवन भुवन निधान He is the master and sustainer, sustainer of all the three worlds. Jaya Jaya Deva Hare. He is he is the one who wins, who gains victory even over demigods. Uh, to that lotus eye lord, lotus eyed lord, uh, our many many of obeisances. Uh, and again in Bhagavatam six sixteen thirty one, Chitra Ketu Maharaj says. तदर्शनम ध्वस्त समस्त के विषय स्वस्था मनाता करनो ग्रयान मुनि दे कृष्णस दर्शन तद दर्शन व्हाट हैपेंस ध्वस्त समस्त के विषय ऑल द सेंस आर इरेडिकेटेड जस्ट बाय अटेंटिवली हैविंग दर्शन ऑफ कृष्णा एंड देन व्हाट हैपेंस स्वस्था मला देन द माइंड इज सिचुएटेड इन अ हेल्दी कंडीशन You know the disease of the mind. It is said is most prominent, especially in Kaliyuga. You know, with this COVID-19 situation, actually uh, more people are suffering from being suffocated inside the house. Why? Because they don't have any engagement. Uh, so they are going mental. Actually, the government. I don't. I don't. I don't know in other countries, but in in Australia, they have contributed so many millions of dollars in budget. for um treating mental mentally distressed people due to being locked in lockdown situation in houses they going mental and because they going mental there is more domestic violence uh, there is there is there is more cases of marriage breakdown and and these things like this um, so uh um uh, swastha the healthy condition of the mind means when we are able to focus on krishna without any deviation but our uh, flickery mind is not allowing us to do that why because our desires are many branched but when we see and we look at krishna have darshan of krishna then these two things happen firstly kil bishayi our sins get eradicated when sins are eradicated then swastha then we become healthy in our mind and the third thing that happens antah karano within the cause of our heart krishna becomes manifested huh? and then pravridya bhakta the devotee then advances in devotional services and in this way he attains the supreme personality of god at who here is addressed as adi purusha mm. um so um in uh the 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 nirikshan or the examining of the opposite parties of kurukshetra um krishna was even merciful to them and bhishma dev appreciates that very much mm-hmm. and um he says tathaiva uh, tathaiva chanya actually this incident also is remembered by uh uddhava in third canto second chapter verse number 20th of shrimad bhagavatam there he says tathai vachanyam naraloka veera ya ahave krishna mukhar vindam the tathai vachanyam in that battlefield ah uh, naraloka veera all the soldiers who were assembled ya ahave in that battlefield what did they see krishna mukhar vindam they saw the lotus face of krishna uh, in fact bhishma dev expresses then i am more fortunate than arjuna because you had your back towards arjuna or krishna but i was able to see until i fought the battle your lotus face uh, so all the soldiers on the opposite side of the army they were able to see krishna face to face and krishna krishna's face is addressed here is krishnara mukhara vinda ha huh? lotus like face of krishna ha huh? and what did they do when they saw lotus like face of krishna how did they see 
ಉದ್ಧವ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ನೈತ್ರೈಪಿ ಬಂತೋ ನಯನಾಭಿರಾಮ ಥ್ರೂ ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಐಸ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಡ್ರಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ನೆಕ್ಟ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣಸ್ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೇಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಸೋಲ್ಜರ್ಸ್ ದೇ ವರ್ ಡ್ರಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ದ ನೆಕ್ಟ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣಸ್ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫೇಸ್ the uh, the vision the proper utilization of the vision is to just have darshan of krishna that's all uh, and see krishna in each and every living entity in everything that we survey krishna is everywhere just seeing that uh, and in this way naitra pibhanti drinking the um, uh, the festival uh, of a uh, krishnar mukharavinde the sight of krishna's lotus face uh, and then he mentions in the last line prarthrasta puta padam apurasya so there are two things firstly partha astra partha means arjuna and astra means weapon so arjuna shot his arrows and when he shot his arrows towards the enemies what did he do puta he purified the enemy and when the enemy became purified they became eligible to actually go back home to godhead and how did they go back home back to godhead by ya ahave krishna <coughs> mukharavindam by seeing the lotus face of krishna drinking the sight of krishna through their lotus eyes nayana virama very nicely nayana virama is described as very pleasing to the eyes krishna's lotus face is very pleasing to the eyes and in that way um they got out of the samsara mm? so to approach krishna actually purification happens through the devotee even shukadev go swami uh, says in the prayer you know kirata hunandra pulinda pulkasha abhir shumbha yavana kashadaya yarnya cha papa yatha yapashraya shraya shudhyanti tasmay prabhavishnave namaha he says that all these people who are coming from the sinful regions kirat hunand pulind pulkasha abhir shumbha yavana you know yavana the mleches how can they be purified ye anya cha papa these are all papa yonis they are doing sinful activities however ye anya cha papa yad apashray ashraya when they take ashray of the pure devotees of the lord then shudhyanti then purification happens shudhyanti tasmay prabhavishna venava why because they are under the shelter of vishnu whose prabhava prabhava influence is very great shudhyanti tasmay prabha vishna venava prabhu very nicely translates translates lord vishnu's influence is very great and devotees have access to lord vishnu's lotus uh, feet and therefore those who take shelter of the devotees they are purified uh, and when they are purified then krishna accepts them so it is the devotees who purify more you know than the lord that that we see you know even in um, incidents of nalkuvere and manegri we see that krishna um, uh, you know said i don't have anything to do with these people but what to do my pure devotee narad muni has said when i come face to face with these two then i will deliver them so i am inclined to deliver them so in this way even bhishma dev who is supposedly a mahajana he is not addressing krishna directly he is actually addressing krishna through arjuna so in this way for so example he says hritavati partha sake prate mamastu that let my attraction flow towards lord krishna and he addresses him as partha sake who is friend of arjuna he doesn't directly say krishna so even he a mahajana approaches krishna through a pure devotee arjuna so how much we should also take this to take to this method to approach krishna through pure devotees in our parampara and show due respects to all the devotees around us i see that it's already uh, one hour i've been speaking for and i have only managed to cover one shloka when i intended to cover two shlokas so 
um, Balram Prabhu, is it all right if we uh, continue with the next shloka in the in the next session and um, uh, and, and take questions now if there are any? Sure, Prabhu. Thank you, thank you so much, Prabhu. I'm so sorry, Prabhu. Uh, I thought you know um, I, I would be able to cover two verses, but um, obviously not. No, no problem, Prabhu. No problem at all. Hare Krishna devotees, um, anyone would like to have uh, ask any questions to Prabhu? Uh, now is the time. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, that was Pranam, all grace to Prabhupada. Mara, uh, I mean, uh, Prabhuji, thank you very much for such a nice lecture. Uh, uh, through your lecture, we can actually feel how much love you have for the Bhagavatam and uh, uh, for the, uh, and uh, you really uh, gave that uh, feeling of, you know, uh, the the attractiveness of Krishna and how much we are we should be uh, having attractiveness, but uh, our situation is so impure that we are not able to. But uh, very enlightening to hear your lecture, Prabhu. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mataji, for your encouragement. Um, it all credit actually to our Guru Maharaj. Um, we also are trying. Uh, we are not there. But um, in association of devotees, when we discuss Krishna's pastimes, then it becomes... Uh, very sublime, um, and we can deep dive, dive you know, into it. Um, very nicely, actually, we are studying Shukadeva Goswami prayers, um, and therein, in the last verse of Shukadeva Goswami uh, prayers, uh, Krishna mm -hmm. actually very nicely, um, if I can quote, there he mentions, um, sorry, not Krishna, Shukadeva Goswami, actually mentions in those prayers that um, namas, uh, namas, tasme, namas tasme bhagavate vasu devaya vedase uh, prapur jnanam ayam somya yan mukham buruhasavam that uh, you know Krishna yet from whose mukha amburuhasavam his lotus like mouth asks Asavam, nectar from his mouth. So in the translation, Prabhupada writes, the pure devotees drink up the nectarian transcendental knowledge dropping from the lotus-like mouth of the Lord. Um, so, you know, how we can see, you know, like how is this possible that, that you know, this philosophy that we are discussing uh, and, and we are singing these verses, um, Actually, uh, how can we have access to it? Because seemingly it, it seems to be coming directly from Krishna's lotus mouth. And in the last line of the paper, which is very beautiful, Srila Prabhupada writes, the pure devotees of the Lord, however, can equally release the nectar in the form of the profound philosophical discussions and in the form of kissing by the Lord in the Ras dance, as there is no mundane distinction between the two. So how in the, you know, uh, Rasa Dance, it is said that Krishna is intimate with the gopis. And we can never think that we can be like that. We are not qualified at all. But uh, here it is said, but however, discussing the philosophy of Krishna consciousness and discussing Bhagavatam, which is Krishna himself, then it is actually no different from Krishna, um, uh, you know, um, uh, having his intimate pastimes with the gopis. And when we discuss this philosophy of Krishna consciousness, we are actually taking the nectar from the lotus uh, like mouth of Krishna directly. Um, so it is very enlightening that, you know, um, all the devotees uh, are together discussing uh, these, these pastimes. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dandavas Pranam. My name is Shatbhijananda Das. A very, a very inspiring uh, class, Prabhuji. Um, as you very nicely said, that uh, we cannot understand Krishna by our material senses. 
as you referred that quote, that verse, Adha Sri Krishna Nama Adhina Bhavet Grahi Mindirai. So you related the, the story of the Sorga story. That is very uh, nice that uh, they can see, even though physically they do, they, he's blind, but uh, he still is able to see the form of the Lord. So uh, that is really connecting points there that uh, by the material senses we cannot see, but only by the, um, by the mercy of the Krishna, only we are able to see and understand Krishna. Uh, That's very nice, Prabhuji. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. you know, as Prabhupada says, Vemanjana Churita Bhakti Lochanena. Eyes have to be ointed with uh, love uh, to see Krishna. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prabhu. Uh, yes, Prabhu. Uh, thank you so much, Prabhu. There is one uh, thing that you mentioned very nicely today. The attitude and attention is important when we take the sin of the Lord. So I still remember when uh, I first visited uh, Tirumala, you know, Lord Balaji, uh, before he um, came to his Kamsila Prabhupada's mission. We normally close the eyes when we enter, but first of all, we get only maybe a fraction of you know, seconds to take the of Balaji when we go inside. Yes, and, yes. Uh, but now, you know, thanks to Srila Prabhupada, you know, that um, we can at least see uh, the Lord and then, uh, you know, get some glance of uh, seeing the Supreme Lord. The only th question I had was like, how do we get this, develop this attention? You know, when we see the form of the Lord, most of the time we lose track as soon as we enter into the temple. And uh, when we take darshan, uh, like, you know, how we have to take that sin from the lotus feet and above and like that. But most of the time we lose track and then we don't, uh, con you know, put much concentration, our attention. So how can we just develop that attention, you know, uh, along with the attitude when we take that sin of the Lord, if you can just uh, mention some, please, Prabhu. Thank you very much. Um, yes, Prabhuji, thank you. I, the first thing, you know, of course, is to be aware of it aware of the shortcomings um, that, you know, when we are not able to have darshan. And, um, and Krishna says, Abhyas Yogena Kanteya. So by practice, you know, we can actually uh, progress. Um, and um, this meditation on Krishna's form is uh, spiritual. That's what we have to, you know, um, uh, take into account. And along with that, we also have to ask for mercy of the devotees, that the devotees who have so nicely blessed the Lord, we have to show that appreciation as well. And when that appreciation is there, um, then we will find that all the forces around us are um, encouraging, not only encouraging, is facilitating that our concentration be submerged. As here in this uh, past time it is said, that uh, Vishuddha Dharana, meaning that Bhishma Dev was able to meditate uh, and see through his eyes the form of Krishna because his Dharana was Vishuddha, meaning it was completely purified and he wasn't thinking about any other subject matters. You know, here it is mentioned the man who had fought thousands of battles, spoken thousands of uh, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, debates or, you know, meanings with thousands of meanings, um, finally fell silent and concentrated all his attention on the Lord. And uh, this is what uh, we, we have to, you know, consciously meditate on that when we die, uh, you know, how can we converge our attention on Krishna? Whereas when in healthy condition, we are not able to do it. Our mind is just uh, wandering around here and there so fast. Um, so it must be a matter of great concern to us. Um, so this practice is needed that when we are with the Lord, having darshan of the Lord, it is just us and the Lord um, that, that, you know, we should not be thinking about any other subject matters because the Lord will take care of it. Why we think about other subject matters is because we don't fully have faith that, you know, that Lord will, um, uh, uh, you know, that we think we, we, we have to take care. You know, in this past time also, we'll discuss next week um, that uh, Krishna is worried for Arjuna, but 
Arjuna is fully surrendered. He's not worried for himself. Hmm. Similarly, a pastime comes to my mind um, that, you know, the great warrior in, of Maratha, Shivaji, um, hmm. he came to see Tukaram and he was meditating, seeing the form of the Lord in the assembly of Tukaram. And at that time, the um, the Mughals, uh, the uh, Mohammedans, they, they, they attacked. And Tukaram, uh, you know, prayed to the Lord that, you know, your great devotee, the king, is now having your darshan. And how can you allow, you know, these other, uh, you know, enemies to attack? Um, you have taken a vow that you will protect your devotees. And uh, we see that when Shivaji, the great warrior, um, he was the king. Uh, when he was having audience of the Darsh, uh, audience of the Lord, he did not care about any other thing. Uh, and Krishna fully protected and looked after him. So you know how much more should we? You know, I mean, we are not managing a kingdom. At most, we may be managing a household. Right. Our responsibilities are nothing. In, in, in front of the responsibilities that a king like, for example, Amrish Maharaj had. But nonetheless, all the faculties of his senses, mind, were totally, you know, uh, absorbed in Krishna. Savai manaha Krishna pada arabindyo vacham sivai kuntra gunanu varnali karo harer mandir marjana dishu shrutim jagar achyut sattato de Mukunda Lingale Darshanay the show. Mukunda Lingale, seeing the form of the Lord, is fully absorbed. And all the ministers then knew that King, our King is a great devotee of the Lord, therefore we should not disturb him. And we should do carry out the orders of the kingdom. And when the king comes to ask for the account, we should just report to him. And Maharaj Ambish, what he would do, he would simply smile at them and say yes. And all the ministers would become satisfied. Why? Because King Ambish was a devotee of the Lord. And it is said, the smile of a devotee actually satisfies everyone. So all his work was automatically done. Um, but that surrender, you know, is needed. And that surrender can happen overnight, or it may take many uh, lifetimes. And that's what all us devotees we aspire for, that we have faith that Krishna Bhakti Kaila Sarva Karma Kritahai, that when we do Krishna Bhakti, all our work automatically is done. We don't have to worry about it. Krishna says, Ma Suchaha Sarva Dharma Parityaja Mame Kam Sharanam Raja Ham Tvam Sarva Papedyo Moshishyami Ma Suchaha. Don't worry. Um, I hope that's okay, Balram Prabhu. Yes, so we should take a leave here. And uh, today I just want to share something Sri Ram Prabhu shared uh, in the comments that uh, Maharaj's uh, uh, pulse of wisdom or Guru Maharaj's statement today. I just want to read as it is. Krishna is blackish blue like new water laden cloud. Very beautiful. When we look at Krishna, so much unlimited effluence is flowing out of his body that we don't see him as black but as white. That's why many, many times we see him as a marble deities, white Krishna. By constitution, he is not white. Mega Shyamala Komalangao. Shyama is not black, not blue, but in between them. Very beautiful color. That is Mega Shyamam Ganashyam. So, this is the note from Sri Ram Prabhu. Like, thank you very much for wonderful realization of how to take darshan of the Lord. In fact, today's pulse of wisdom just coincided with your description of the Lord's, uh, Lord's class. That, thank you, Prabhu. So, thank you very much, Prabhuji. And I thank all the devotees who have written their nice, encouraging comments uh, for my purification. Thank you very much, Dekin and Prabhuji, Rishikesh, Krishna Prabhu, um, Vajanti Malamataji, I think, and Prasan Atma Prabhu, um, uh, Radha Raman Prabhuji, Rishikesh Prabhu, uh, and, and uh, Sri Ram Prabhuji. Thank you so much. Yeah. I seek your blessings. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Viras Prabhu, Hare again.
uh, for your time you know um, so soon uh, we'll plan to see you face to face sometime <laughs> next year maybe you never think you have to stop the riots in minneapolis first bro <laughs> <laughs> i hope everyone is safe yeah everything is fine uh, but uh, still some areas are not safe yet uh, so we are still trying to put under control so we don't know yeah. what, is, what is in the store from this well the cafe means um, anyway we can stay at home and do bhagavatam <laughs> yes bro hari krishna thank you so much hari vancha kalpata rubye cha kripa kindu bhye cha patitanam pavane vaishnavibhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha अनंत को तो वैष्णव बंद की जाए श्री प्रभु जय श्री प्रभु जय श्री प्रभु की जाए थैंक यू जय हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण